Hello, welcome to the Online Strength Coach Podcast, episode 109. Today's episode, I'm going to talk about the concept of weak muscles or bring up weak parts of the movement. So this is something that people talk about a lot within strength training. It gets a lot of lip service, for instance, within the deadlift. People will say, oh, you're weak off the floor, therefore you need to work on your back strength. So they'll do a lot of rows, a lot of underhand rows, um, flies, back extensions, you name it. They'll throw the kitchen sink at it. And whilst there is merit to this notion, it's not something that I'm poo-pooing in this podcast. It is something that I feel that people are kind of missing the woods for the trees or missing the forest for the woods, (laughs) or as the saying goes. The bigger picture is quite often what is displayed or what can be thought of as a weakness. So in the deadlift, your inability to maintain your trunk position from the floor, the need for you to round over to accommodate, uh, to break the bar off the floor or to accommodate the position you're in is often just an artifact of poor movement and poor technique. A lot of the times with deadlift, people just yank it. They don't set up. uh, They don't know where they should have their feet. They don't know where they should grip it. They don't know where they should have their their hips. They don't know how to extend their back. They don't know how to properly brace through the trunk. These are all things that are very difficult to find out for yourself through experience. And it's something that a good powerlifting coach or a coach with a good kinesthetic awareness, there was someone, someone, someone used this to talk about Ed Cohen. I think it was Charles Poliquin in uh, the most recent PowerCast, uh, Mark Bell's PowerCast. He's talking about Ed Cohen being one of the, the coaches that he knows with the best kinesthetic awareness. And I think that's, that's a good way of putting it across, uh, a coach that's, like watch so he was saying there's a lot of guys there's a lot of coaches that have watched someone moving they've like looked at it or you've seen a thousand deadlifts or you've seen a million deadlifts but how many deadlifts have you studied how many deadlifts have you paid attention to how many different body types have you seen trying to do a deadlift Um, people don't analyze what they see they don't take the time to try different things to be critical self-critical of what they do, like, how many times have you watched yourself deadlift? How many reps have you seen yourself do? How many reps have you seen other people's doing? Um, have you paid, have you looked at their hips? Have you looked at their knees? Have you looked at the bar in relation to them, to their body? There's a whole bunch of things you can look at when you watch a lift to try and determine what's optimal, what's suboptimal. What are some things you can change to come up with a better movement for that person or for yourself? The best thing you can do as a lifter who's self-coached is to watch a whole bunch of lifters. Watch, um, if you're a 93 kilo lifter, try and watch as many 93 kilo lifters as you can. Or watch some like 83, some 105s. Look at the way they're built, look at their limb lengths, look at their torso, torso length. Are they lean? Are they fat? Do they have short femur, long femur? Do they have a long tibia, short tibia? Do they are they stocky? Are they long? Are they slight, slender? You look at how Tom Martin deadlifts versus how Ed Cohen deadlifts. You see two completely different movements. Two lifters built in different ways. Like Ed Cohen himself is like quite small stocky guy so but he has quite large joint angles when he's pulling but the fact that he's um he's such a little tank a little unit he can just like he can pull world record weights someone like tom martin who can maintain relatively small joint angles because of the way he's built so when he takes a conventional deadlift when he breaks it off the floor he's a small knee angle small hip angle and he has outrageous back strength that allows him to pull huge weights uh, for a guy, even as like a 93 IPF lifter pulling 350, like absolutely mental. Uh, but it's due to his levers, the way he pulls, and it's a guy who obviously studies a lot, watches a lot of lifting, thinks about things a lot. It's a very knowledgeable guy 
who's managed to come up with a squat stance or a squat technique that works for someone who is like so typically someone who is that kind of big conventional puller they normally struggle with back squat because they're more like the KK Kovanovskos kind of guy where they'd have to lean over hugely to squat they find depth difficult although they have a really strong back they try to over rely on it in squat so it becomes more of a hip lift than a knee and a hip lift because of the hip lift it becomes essentially a good morning with a knee bend that's a lot weaker than if they were to utilize their hips and their knees have a bit more of a balanced approach be able to get the center pull of the lot to get the center of the bar the the center of balance directly over their center of support or as close to their center of support as they can manage through the squat lift these are things that if you don't if you're not aware of them or you're not studying them or you're not trying to uh, analyze what you're doing analyze what others do and try to tweak things here and there or watch the tutorials read uh, probably best thing to do is like hire a coach would be the expedient way of doing it but if you're not going to go around that route you need to look at these avenues you need to watch yourself lift you need to understand the movements that you're trying to do quite often for instance um two lifters that i coach one's a weightlifter one's a powerlifter both have like a dropped hip when they were squatting so if you look at the bottom position one bum cheek's lower than the other or one bum cheek looks lower than the other so if you look at that physio might look at that or sports therapist might look at that or a personal trainer might look at that and they might say oh your glutes are underdeveloped on one side or you're over reliant on one side or you've dropped arch in your foot or there's something wrong with your balance your knees or this that the other thing if you say you say to a lifter like that if you see someone with a drop bum whichever bum is lower than the other tell them to bring that leg back relative to the front leg so a bit more of a split stance kind of like clock off when you see them doing pulls take a bit of a split stance and watch that bum drop go away straight away it's just different limb lengths someone could have an asymmetry someone could be they could have a limb length of 80 centimeters on one side and 77 centimeters on the other side or they might have a might have a scoliosis of the spine or they might have like a pelvis might be lifted up on one side or there's a whole raft of things that can explain anomalous movement or things that look like weakness like with bench press oh, I struggle at lockout or I miss it my sticking point so do loads of like band work and loads of board work to overload it yeah it can work to an extent but that sticking point doesn't go away you have the, within the strength curve as it's called or within any movement there is going to be a, a greatest moment of inertia or a, a greatest moment movement arm or moment arm through the lift so for most lifters on the bench press that's somewhere where the arms become parallel with the floor because that's the largest lever on the humerus the greatest amount of force to be exerted that's the sticking point in the squat somewhere around parallel where the knees are at 90 degrees or sorry where the femur is at 90 degrees or parallel to the floor around that area is the sticking point in the squat because that's where the moment arms are greatest some low bar lifters that can change relative and for most deadlifters it's from the floor where Joint angles are the greatest, um, where leverage is not as good, where the hips maybe are too hot or high, or where the, the hips are far away from the bar. In the deadlift, wherever the hips are furthest away from the bar relative can be the sticking point. It can change for different people, it depends on your setup, how you pick it up. Someone like me, who try, I try to keep a reasonably strict setup when I lift, uh, my sticking point tends to be at the knee because it's the whatever way I set up that's the greatest moment of inertia for me now I can do block pulls to try to overload that and there's definitely merit to that that's something I've used in the past with good success there's lots of lifters that do these movements um, 
they do half like sorry they do block pulls uh, lots of lower back work rows there is merit to it and it's definitely something that I, I include in my own programming and the programming of others but it's more look at first causes first is basically what I'm trying to say try to look at technique first look at movement look at where blockages are uh, if you're bowing at the knee sure doing lots of glute med strength is going to help it's going to help a bunch so the good girl bad girl machine hip circle monster walks external rotations it's all going to help build up strength external strength and external rotation of the humerus which will help you keep the knees out in the squat however there's going to be a biting point at some stage where that's going to buy in again well if you do lots and lots and lots of uh, volume and movement with um, 60 to 80 percent you do lots of tempo work lots of pause work pause at different positions squat with hip circle or bands around your knees like do the movement in different manners to try and focus on your movement to try and grain the more efficient path which is the knees to be out over the toes because if the knees buckle in the hips shoot out and then all of a sudden we have a big back angle to deal with and all of a sudden we're usually weak and that's where we miss the squat if we miss the squat from going knee valgus because hips shoot out and then we have to good morning on the way and that's where we miss we, we just can't stand or we use lots of back and we stand but it's ugly as fuck so you can you can look to strengthen things up and not address the technique or you can look at the technique first and foremost address that first and foremost and then add in supplemental strengthening work and it will come together and you'll be more successful in that way okay hope you've uh, maybe taken something away from this episode maybe even enjoyed it any comments questions please leave them below in the comment section any questions you'd like to ask but don't want it public please please send an email to speedpowerperformance.gmail.com thank you very much for listening i've been mark and i'll catch you in the next episode of the online strength coach podcast goodbye